Hello, and welcome to the Chapter 9 Workout Problem video. Let's begin with problem number one. Inflation. The problem states, the index number representing the price level changes from 110 to 115 in one year, and then from 115 to 120 in the next. Since the index number increases by five each year, is five the inflation rate each year? So that's our first question, and then we'll go on and answer the next question. So let's first talk about this. So these numbers, right? So, so the 110 here, 115, right? 115 to 120. So, so, the, so the way this these numbers works, these these are indexed numbers, right? So they're not the true uh, price. Uh, prices, right? They don't represent the true dollar amounts. What they do is they represent a relative price. Really, one thing to remember about indexed pr index numbers and price levels is that whatever the base year is, right? The base year, and we'll talk about this more in the next problem as we go. The base year always equals a hundred. Okay, so that's that's the base year. So that's where we say, okay, we're, we're comparing all the price levels to the base year where a dollar, we'll say the dollar is worth a dollar, right? And then as it increases, we'll do the calculation to come up with the index number. Okay, so these are not necessarily percentages. These aren't percentages and they're not dollars. So these are just indexed price levels is what they are. Okay, so that's the nature of it. And so that kind of answers our first question. So is five, right, as it goes from 110 to 115 and then from 115 to 120, each of those are five incremental price level changes, right? They're not percentages, they're not dollar bills, right? They're just price level chain number changes. Okay, so, so it's not a 5% inflation rate each year. Uh, one one way we can look at this is we can actually do a calculation. Okay, so this is the first change. Okay, so the, the percentage is shown here, right? As we go from 110 to 115, the percentage really is 4.5 percent. That's taking the the current or the most current year minus the uh, the beginning point, right? Divided by the ba the beginning. Okay, right. So that gets a, gives us percentage change, and then we multiply it by 100 to, to get us to the the percent here, 4.5 percent. So that's the first year change. The second the second change from 115 to 120 the next year is shown here, and it's 4.3 percent. So the five is not the inflation rate, right? So it's not a 5% inflation rate. So the, the question too is, is the inflation rate the same? Well, we can see here from our calculations, 4.5% and 4.3% that they're not gonna be the same, okay? They're not gonna be the same. And the, these really, these index numbers here are, even though it's the same, uh, a, a five point increase from one year uh, to the next and then th then the next year we're going to have another five point that doesn't mean it's going to be the same uh, percent change right uh, five in one year and five in the next year you're ha you're now having a different base as as five five uh, increases in the second year this is a uh, five is a different percentage increase compared to the 115 then five of, a, of 110, right? So as you get larger numbers, you get up there, then a five price level change is not gonna be the same, have the same impact on overall percent. So hopefully that helps you there. So really the answer is, uh, the, the, the first one is no, the second one is also no, and then uh, type out an explanation of what you see here in the, the solution here in red, and that's part of your explanation, and also explain how uh, as the, the level increases, a, f a change of five is gonna be a different percent, right? To a larger level or a higher level than maybe at a lower level on the price levels, okay? So now let's go on to problem two. So this one we're gonna talk about uh, our price index versus the, the inflation rate, kind of how we're gonna be able to get to that. So this one says total price 
of purchasing a basket of goods in the United Kingdom over four years is in year one, 940 pounds, year two is 970 pounds, year three, 1,000 pounds, and year four is 1,070 pounds. So now we're supposed to calculate two price indices. An indice is just the plural for index, right? One using year one is the base year, okay? And then the next one we're gonna year, use year four. But first let's focus on year one here. How do we use year one as the base year? So year one is this number right here, 940. So let's look here. First, year one, or year uh, the base year I should say, is always 100. That's how you can find the base year if you look at the index. It's always gonna be the one that's 100. As we go on to the second year, we see an increase of 30, right? And so the way we get the index number is we take our new year, right, divided by the base year. Base year is always going to be the denominator, right? The new year that we're getting the index number for is gonna be our numerator on top. And then we multiply it by 100, okay? So that's the index number in this case is 103.2. Now we go on to the third year and do the same thing again, the base year, gonna be our denominator, our divisor, right? So 940 is the base year, and that'll give us 106.4. And then the fourth year again, that's the equation, and we get 113.8. So that's that's for the first year. So the second year, we're using, we're not using uh, 940 more, now we're saying we're using the fourth year. So this 1070 becomes the base year. That's what we're gonna divide everything else by. And year four, uh, like I said before, right? That's gonna be 100. That's gonna be equal to 100. So let's do year one. So there there we go. So again, our base year is here. And, and it's okay that they're below 100. That just shows us the relationship here that year four as, as 100, right? All other years compared to it, as we index it to year four, they're all gonna be smaller or, or they're, they're, the price was lower, right? The price level was lower, so it's gonna be below 100. As the price level rises above the base year, it's gonna be above 100, right? So that's kind of the idea to be able to gain an understanding there. So there's year two, uh, three, and then of course four, we know it's gonna be what? It's gonna be 100. And so that's what, where we get 100. We don't show the full equation on this one. Uh, um, base year is 100. So now, now the next step is we're, then we're supposed to calculate the inflation rate based on the first price index, meaning the, with the base year being year one. So here is how we do the inflation rate from our index numbers. Year one, there is no inflation rate, right? As we move from year one to year two, then we, had a, well, then we have a rate, right? We have the change, the percentage change from year one to year two. That's gonna be our, our first inflation rate that we can calculate and that is going to be, again, right here, this is what we're looking at on this side, right? This is the extra. This is the inflation rate calculation. This right here, the beginning uh, to the left, we've already calculated that, right? That's where we get our index number. We plug our index numbers into here. So this is base year, is 100. Uh, then 103 is our cases, that gives us 3.2%. That is our inflation rate, 3.1%. And then for our final, again, we have our previous year here, right? So this is the, this is previous and this is our current right here. So we, su we subtract previous from current, divide by the previous, and that will give us our percent change or, or our inflation rate as we do the index. Okay, so the, the next question then is, so that's, that's what we're supposed to do here. And this says, if you had used the other index, the price index where uh, year four is the base year, would you get a different inflation rate or would it be the same? Well, let's go ahead and see. So here is year one moving to year two. Those are the same, right? We got 3.2 and 3.2. Year three, same. We calculated the same way, right? Using our previous year and our current years and then year four, they're gonna be the same. So uh, uh, would, would you get a different uh, inflation rate? And the answer is no, you wouldn't get it 
a different inflation rate. They would be the same. Okay, let's go on to problem number three. This one's pretty easy. This one's just kind of a general information problem, really. So within one to two percentage points, what has the US inflation rate been during the last 20 years? You can look, there's actually a graph in the book you can look at. Uh, there's also one in the video, in the lecture video that you can kind of see. And really, the last 20 years have generally seen an inflation rate uh, between one and three percent. That's kind of where we've been. It's sometimes it's kind of gone uh, down a little more, up a little more, or whatever. But generally, that's gonna that's kind of the trend within. And that's problem three. That's really all it is. Problem four: impact of inflation. If inflation rises unexpectedly by five percent, indicate for each of the following whether the economic actor is helped, hurt, or unaffected. One, one thing that we can look at in this is those that are most hurt by inflation are those that are holding cash, whether they have it in the bank or whether they have, they have it in their hands. If they have it uh, in the bank in a non-interest bearing account or if they have it in their hand, right, which is totally non-interest bearing, that's gonna hurt them the most. So let's look at the first one. It says a union member with a COLA wage contract, right? If you looked in the lecture video, you know what COLA is. It's the cost of living allowance. It is indexed typically to the inflation rate. In that case, that person is going to be unaffected. Inflation will have no effect on them or on their wage at least, right? Okay, or their ability to purchase things. So B, someone with a large stash of cash in a safe deposit box. Well, that's, that's the definition of someone that's gonna be uh, at risk for uh, an impact uh, of inflation, right? So that definitely is going to be someone that would be hurt by unexpected, unexpected inflation rises, right? Bank lending money at a fixed rate, uh, yeah, that one's gonna be hurt, and mostly by the fixed, right? So banks, I mean, they love to do adjustable rate type stuff. Um, consumers, on the other hand, Typically, since inflation is rising for the most part, right, there are those times when uh, there is some deflation happening, but for the most part, inflation is kind of a common thing. It's normal in the economy, I guess you could say. Uh, and so if they're a fixed rate, they're definitely gonna be hurt. So a person, uh, D, the last one here, a person who is not due to receive a pay raise for another 11 months. Well, during those 11 months, the unexpected 5% inflation rate is going to hurt them. Definitely gonna hurt them, right? So when they when they go and do their pay raise, you know, maybe they can negotiate maybe for a higher rate than they had previously or something. Okay, so problem five. This is the last problem of the chapter. Price level uh, for retiree. So we have Rosalie, the retiree, and she knows that when she retires in 16 years, her company will give her a one-time payment of $20,000 for retiring, like a retirement bonus, right? So it's in the contract, but it, it's 16 years out. If the inflation rate is 6% per year, how much buying power will that $20,000 have when measured in today's dollars, right? So in today's dollars, she's saying, well, 20,000 bucks, I can use that to go and buy a boat, right? She has a boat picked out that she wants to buy that's 20,000 bucks. 16 years from now, is that boat going to be roughly the same price? Well, maybe not, right? How about the whole package? How about the gas that goes in the boat? How about the trailer? How about the fees for the marina, all of these things, right, that may be included in the basket of goods that we calculate uh, overall uh, in inflation rates, right, the, the uh, consumer price index, right, all of them are gonna rise. And so we're, we're assuming that that rise of the whole package for whatever she's gonna spend 20,000 on is gonna be a 6% rise in inflation, which will decrease her buying power. Um, so how much? How much is it, how much is is twenty thousand dollars going to be really worth to her right now at this stage? Well, let's go ahead and calculate. It gives us a hint. It says calculate. Start by calculating the rise in the price level over the sixteen years. And we we kind of did this right with GDP. We did some growth uh, rates and some different things. So what we're able to do is we're able to say okay. Right now is the base year, 
Okay, so $20,000 is worth $20,000 to us right now, right? If we got it, we could go out and buy $20,000 worth of stuff. Inflation hasn't happened yet. So in that case, that's the base year, and we're gonna apply a 6% growth for 16 years. So you remember how we did that? We set it up like this, right? So this is what we want to grow. In this case, it's the base year. So this is the base. And we're just calculating the rise in the price level here. So here's our inflation. This is the inflation rate, inflation rate. And then 16 right here, this is our the years. We're keeping everything to years. 6% is an annual rate. Uh, 16 is the periods, which are years, right? If, if we had a different uh, rate for per quarter or per semi-annual, whatever, we'd have to adjust the uh, our equation a little bit. But this one, it makes it easy. We'll stick with doing years. It makes it nice and clean. So what we get 254. What does that mean to us? So with base year being 100 and 16 years out, the index is going to rise, right? So this is the price level. It's going to be 254. We're going to here. Let's let's throw another equation out here. So here's the ne uh, the next equation. So twenty thousand dollars divided by two point five four. Where do we get two point five four? Start with the base year. We don't have all of the the levels in between. We know there are six percent increases. We just have the the price level out way out here, right? And so what we need to calculate is we need to say really what is the uh, percentage change here between the year one and year 16 and that's going to tell us what impact inflation will have on our twenty thousand dollars okay so so where we're at here is we're trying to find the percentage right or the the impact on a hundred the base year the twenty thousand dollars right here's our twenty thousand dollars we're trying to find the impact percentage wise for that that uh, that gets us to this 254 at year 16. This is year 16. And really, the way the way it works, right, is in order to get from 100 to 254, we we basically multiply our 100 times 2.54, right, and that equals 254. So really, this is the percent impact, right? 2.54 is actually 254 percent right is the inflation over those 16 years it's, it's pretty pretty amazing right and so how do we how do we now convert our 20,000 down to down to a base year value if we increase when we're going this direction if we increase by 2.54 percent we need to go back the other direction Okay, and we're discounting. It's something that's called discounting. We're going to discount this twenty thousand dollars at uh, at this rate, right? We're going to take it. We're going to reduce it. It's kind of like a deflator. And so we divide instead of multiply. In this case, we're, we multiply the hundred. So really, to go the other direction, we would then divide by the two point five four. So we're dividing twenty thousand, which is our base year dollar amount, by 2.54, which represents the raise, rise in the price level over the 16 years, and our end result is in the, in year one dollars in, in 16 years we'll really have the purchasing power of seven thousand eight hundred and seventy four dollars. Hopefully this helps. We'll talk to you later. Have a good day.